Welcome to another Unisurf Physics Vodcast. Today we are going to be looking at a phenomena called Newton's Rings, named after Sir Isaac Newton, who studied the phenomena and did many scientific measurements. This vodcast is actually in response to two questions emailed to us by Caitlin. The first being the relation between the curvature of a convex lens and the size of the rings. She said she tried the experiment at home and couldn't see anything, so we'll look a little bit into that and reasons why. And the second, uh, what is the effect that different colours have on the rings? Does it change their size, their intensity, etc.? OK, well, let's start by looking at the configuration and what you actually need. In a textbook, they have pictures like this. They'll have a little eye up the top and some light coming down, come from a different angles. Sometimes they've got wiggly bits representing the light. Anyway, you can have a look in textbooks and see the different types of representations or just have a surf around on the net. Now, what does this look like in reality? Well, it's depicting a magnifying glass. Here's one here. And it is actually, if we align it up there, you'll see the shape. It's actually flat on this edge here, curved here. And on the bottom, there's actually a plate. I've got a large glass plate there. So that's actually sitting there. And our lens is sitting up next to it. So here's how the experiment would be set up. We have our plate. And we sit our lens on the top of it. Curved side down. OK, so what do we get? Caitlin said she tried this and saw nothing. It certainly doesn't look anything like it does in the pictures or diagrams in the books, a set of concentric rings, bright and dark. But um, if you just get the light right and the angle and look really carefully, you will see something interesting, especially if you just grab the lens and just press downwards on it a little bit. You can't see it on the video, but there's a little dot there. It looks like a little dark dot at the point where the lens touches the glass plate. And if you rock it back and forward, you can see it move back and forward across the plate. But you do need to get the lighting just right. It's only about a third of a millimetre across. That's when you're pressing reasonably hard on the top of the lens there. Now, if you get another magnifying glass, actually, like one of these, and actually put it over the top of the lens and push down on it and look down, you can actually see it a little bit larger. You could also put it actually under a, a low powered microscope and see the rings as well. Now another part of Caitlin's question was uh, what about the curvature? Well if you actually grab a magnifying glass that's a little thicker and put it on top and do the same thing, press down on it and look very carefully, rock it backwards and forwards, uh, you'll also see a dot. And what you'll notice, even between these two here, is that the dot associated with this one is slightly larger than, than the dot associated with this one. Now I can hear you all say, how can we see Newton's rings easily? Well actually I have a paperweight that does just this, and here it is. OK, well, let's have a look at it. It actually has two rings of metal. There's three thumb screws there. And sandwiched in between the two pieces of metal are two pieces of glass. The bottom one being a flat piece of glass. It's actually frosted on the back. And the top one is flat on the front with a very, very slight curve through the centre there. So when you actually hold it down, and if you adjust these knobs, you'll see just here the rings and they move around. We'll just have a, a look, I'll just bring it up into the light there and you'll see that there's some rings and they're called Newton's rings. OK, let's investigate Caitlin's second question concerning the size of the rings under different coloured lights. Now, for the different colours, we'll use laser pointers. We have a red laser pointer, a green one, and a blue one. 
for the experiment they'll all be mounted on this tripod and the laser pointer itself points up at a piece of paper the piece of paper has been folded in half and it's held by a test tube peg that's mounted over to a retort stand here now we all know that laser pointers have little points of light so what happens is it'll form a little point of light on the back sheet of paper the light will be reflected off and it'll be filtered through the front sheet of paper which will illuminate the Newton's ring device down here so it'll give a nice diffused light over the whole surface of the glass plate there now at the back here we've got this thick glass plate that's not really to do with the experiment it's just sitting under the back of the apparatus here to hold it up at an angle so we get a good view of the Newton's rings okay well let's just see how it works I'll just switch on the laser and you'll see over here Newton's rings now I can't really video this demonstration as the light levels are really critical and my video camera gets very confused because the lights are going to be off and each of these lasers here have different intensities and we need to adjust the camera exposure correctly so we can see the Newton's rings really clearly so what we'll do is take a series of photographs and then we can examine each one of these I'll do a red, a green and a blue and then I'll try to do something a little bit clever I'll move this piece of paper downwards and I'll half illuminate the the rings with the laser light and up here I'll put a desk lamp about uh, two meters back and try to illuminate the top half of the Newton's ring uh, device with white light so that we can get a comparison between what the laser lights doing to the rings and what the white light does to the rings okay it's been about two hours and I've taken about 30 photographs and I'm going to show you the best of the best the first one up is the one that's been illuminated with white light and if you look closely at the rings you'll see they're made up of different colors the outer edge of the rings red the inner bit of the rings green and the closest in edge is actually a mauve blue now the second one we move to the colored laser lights we'll start off with the red then the green then the blue so Caitlin's question was to do with what happens as we change between the laser colors or the colors of light and let's have another look we'll look at the red the green the blue now you probably have seen that it seemed to have got smaller as we went up the colors so from the red and then the green looked a little bit smaller and the blue looked a little bit smaller again okay onto the second experiment I did I illuminated half of the device with white light and the other half with the laser light by moving the paper down as I told you about in the experimental setup so let's see how it went we'll look at the red light Now you can see the red light seems to on the right hand side where we've got the colors comes around the red joins onto that and then the red ring forms we'll look at the green we'll see that the ring seems to form off the edge of the green and the blue we'll just look at those again red green blue so I hope you can see what happened there the rings seem to get smaller and the rings on the left hand side the, the laser light illuminated rings lined up with the rings that were formed from the white light with the same color okay well let's revisit Caitlin's questions the first one in relation to the curvature and the size of the rings now the less curve gave the bigger rings as we saw or didn't see when we used the magnifying glass uh, just sitting on top of the flat plate the rings were very small like less than a quarter of a millimeter but when we use my paperweight the actual Newton rings demonstration which has a very little curvature we could easily make the rings large and visible okay a second question was what was the effect of illuminating the rings with different colored lights and as we could see the rings shifted slightly so as we move from the red to the green to the blue 
the rings got slightly smaller. But the really interesting thing was is how they lined up with the rings that were formed when we illuminated with the white light. So two excellent questions, and you can examine the detailed photographs that accompany this podcast, and also do some extra research to learn even more about the physics of Newton's rings. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching the Uniserv Physics podcast, and thanks again to Caitlin for emailing in her excellent questions. Thank you.